Here follow the solutions to the limiting frequency, limiting periods of planets so that they remain stable. I watched my solution, I like it, but there are two slips of the pen. Oh, sorry, two slips of the tongue, not slips of the pen. In the very beginning, I mentioned 0.3 grams per cubic centimeter. I only mentioned it once. That should be 3.0 grams per cubic centimeter. And you will see that throughout the whole solutions, I repeat that 3.0 many, many times. So the 0.3 should not confuse you. Then also near the beginning, I said, so no period can be longer than that period. Well, that should be, of course, that no period of a planet can be shorter than that period. Because if the periods were shorter, then matter would flow out near the equator. So that was also a slip of the tongue. It happens, and I didn't really feel to re reduce that uh, solution, because it's a lot of time. All right, so enjoy it. It's coming up right now. Hello, 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 hello. I'm going to discuss with you a rather trivial solution with a fantastic result, which limits the minimum rotation period that a planet can have. If the roof rotation frequency is so high that the gravitational acceleration at the equator is not high enough to provide the needed centripetal acceleration at the equator, then matter will flow, will move away, move outwards from the equator and thus the planet is no longer stable. And the amazing result is that it's independent of mass, it only depends on the density. Since typical mean densities of planets is roughly 0.3 grams per cubic centimeter, that minimum period is about the same for all planets. And since typical asteroids also have a mean density of 3 grams per cubic centimeter, they have that same minimal period. Even satellites around Earth, they have <laughs> roughly mean densities of 3 grams per cubic centimeter. So that minimum rotation time is also about the same. Let's see how it works. So, the planet had a mass capital M, we know what it is, and we assumed a uniform density of 3.0 grams per cubic centimeter. Admittedly, it is a rough number, but it's by no means unreasonable. So the answers that you will get can be even tested in astronomy. And indeed it's true that no planets are known to have an orbit, to not orbit, to have a rotational period which is lower than the one that I'm going to calculate with you. It's independent of the mass of the planet. We want two-digit precision. If we have a planet, mass m and radius r, then the gravitational acceleration at its surface is this value. That is so immensely trivial that I didn't derive that. You probably learned that in high school, and so I will leave you with that. So that is the gravitational acceleration at the surface of the planet, anywhere 
on the planet. Clearly the mass is forced to pi r cubed times rho. So I can substitute the mass in here and I find then that g at the surface of the planet anywhere is 4 third pi g r rho. Okay, let's now look at the centripetal acceleration at the equator. That of course is the speed at the equator divided by the radius of the planets. We assume the planets are close to spherical. So the, ra the radius is the same everywhere. Now that has to be equal to g, to this g, to calculate what the maximum rotation frequency is before the planet becomes unstable. So I put this equal to g, so v at the equator becomes the square root of gr. I substitute in that equation this g and I find then that v at the equator is this value. Notice it depends on the radius and it depends on the density of the star. However, the period of rotation, how long it takes for one rotation, is 2 pi r over that v. And so you lose that r. And so it becomes independent of capital R. There's no m in there, nothing. There is only rho and the gravitational constant. And therefore I stress that if you take all objects with roughly the same rho, about 3 grams per cubic centimeter, which is also true for asteroids, this equation with rho that I, the value that I gave you will hold for almost all objects, all planets and all asteroids that we know of. So there we go. We take capital G, gravitational constant is 6.7 times 10 to the minus 11 in MKS units, and rho then would be 3.0 thousand kilograms per cubic meter. I substitute that in this equation, and I find about 1.9 hours. So in a nutshell, if I summarize this, no planets should rotate about their own axis any faster than in 1.9 hours. And in fact, no planets have ever been observed that rotate faster. No asteroids have ever been observed that rotate faster than 1.9 hours. I did countless I published countless papers on neutron stars. During my 43 years at MIT, I published about 450 publications in refereed journals and almost all deal with neutron stars. The density of neutron stars is about 10 to the 14 grams per cubic centimeter. Mind-boggling. It's about the same density as a nucleus. The radius of a typical neutron star is about 10 kilometers. And the mass of a typical neutron star is about somewhere between 1.4 and maybe two solar masses. So, let us use this density of a neutron star to calculate the shortest possible rotation period. If it rotated any faster, it would fly apart. So neutron stars could then not exist. You ready for that? So 10 to the 14 grams per cubic centimeter translate into 10 to the 
17 kilograms per cubic meter. I stick that into there and I found that the minimum period of rotation is about 1.3 milliseconds using this very simple, I would call it back on the envelope calculation. Yet, it should interest you that the shortest period today that has been found for rotating neutron stars, and all neutron stars rotate, is 1.5 milliseconds. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Isn't it amazing how this simple relation holds even for neutron stars, provided you put in the approximately correct density. Okay, I, I hope you've learned something basic that when the rotation, free re rotation frequency becomes too high, planets and asteroids and even rotating satellites become unstable. So they can no longer exist because matter would flow out. That's a very basic concept and there are of course countless tests of that in astrophysics. You can try to Google this concept and learn a little bit more. The Earth rotates about its axis in 24 hours, so it's nowhere near the danger level of 1.9 hours. So, I hope you enjoy this. I hope it broadens your horizons a little bit. Because it's an interesting concept, isn't it? Interesting concept that there is a limiting frequency, a limiting period of rotation to make sure that the objects can exist. The same would hold for you, by the way, but you don't have that problem, do you? Take care and let's be friends.